Well, uh, Melvin, you're here for the launch of the uh, world record attempt for the most people receiving a first aid lesson and uh, quite apt really the fact that it's the uh, ProX Stadium for yourself because uh, you had your, your life saved here. What, what are your memories of that day here at uh, the ProX? I actually have no memory of the day. Um, everything that I know about that day has been told to me by other people. Um, I came for the game as I've done many hundreds of times over the years watching Oldham. Uh, and I uh, filed into the away end, which is uh, over there. Uh, and the next thing I knew, I woke up in uh, Chesterfield Royal Hospital about a week later. Um, I had had, uh, with no prior warning, I'd had a cardiac arrest. Uh, I was revived by um, Oldham fans, actually, two Oldham fans who were... Uh, um, trained in CPR, one of them was a, uh, an off-duty paramedic, Kenny Hotwood, uh, and um, together uh, they and the East Midlands Ambulance Service um, saved my life really. Uh, I was supported on that day by uh, I think your physio, Roger Wilde, um, and by stewards from the ground, policemen from Oldham, and so on. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the efforts of those people and the efforts of people who'd been trained in CPR. So the event on the 20th of May, uh, when you're going to attempt to break the world record for the number of people receiving a simultaneous um, first aid lesson, if that be the right description, is, is really, really important. How surprising is it that the fact that um, it's not a, a legal requirement for uh, clubs in this country to, to not have the uh, necessary equipment? I, I, uh, I think it's unbelievable given, I mean those of us who've been around uh, as long as I have watching football and uh, who have seen things like the Bradford City fire and the Hillsborough disaster and all the changes that were made uh, in the wake of that to introduce all seated grounds and so on, uh, that all makes perfect sense but at a, a much cheaper and more practical level uh, it, it really should be a legal requirement for all football grounds, uh, rugby league grounds, rugby union grounds to have a defibrillator and to have people on hand who've actually been trained in the use of a defibrillator. Uh, I don't know if um, Oldham Athletic have got one at uh, sportsdirect.com park but uh, uh, if they haven't then um, in my opinion it would be a small uh, but important gesture if they did. I understand you've made a, a friend of uh, one of the uh, people involved in saving your life, uh, a paramedic. Yes, Kenny. Um, I, I have uh, uh, had a couple of text conversations with Kenny. I've had a long conversation with him. When I go back to uh, uh, see the Oldham Chesterfield game uh, in late March, I think Easter Monday, uh, Kenny and I will be going out for a, a curry the night before and maybe a beer or two so that I can say thank you to him. Uh, we've not been able to track down the other gentlemen who, who were with him on that day uh, and I wish we could but um, uh, yes, I've, I've made friends with Kenny and uh, I'm delighted to uh, say that I'll meet him for the first time um, in Oldham. Obviously it's been a long road uh, back for you, just tell us briefly about uh, what, what that's uh, involved in terms of your recovery programme. Well after I left here, um, the Prague Stadium, I was transferred to Chesterfield Royal Hospital. Uh, from there where I spent about a week in intensive care, uh, I was transferred to, uh, I think it's called the Northern General in Sheffield. Um, and uh, I was uh, given a defibrillator which is a small matchbox size device that sits um, uh, under my left arm 
uh, and he's there um, to shock my heart back into rhythm should the same thing um, happen again whether that be at a football match or uh, or somewhere else um, so I've been at home for a couple of months now slowly getting stronger and I suppose I'm a, a testament to um, people who come through those kinds of events with the help of others and uh, uh, are uh, able to live their lives again hopefully to the full um, as a result of the efforts of others and of course of the NHS. How has the, the whole experience, how has that um, affected your outlook on life? Oh, that's a, that's a hard one to answer. Well, it hasn't stopped me watching Oldham Athletic. Uh, that's the first point. I don't think anything will. Um, I think it, it may, I mean, it does make you realise how fragile life is. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a, a cliche to say death walks behind you, but in my case, uh, it kind of tapped me on the shoulder on that day. Uh, and... Um, uh, life is very precious uh, and it's made me realise that I never knew I had so many friends, so many well-wishers, so many people willing to help uh, and um, as I say life is precious and anything that anybody can do to preserve that, uh, that uh, preciousness um, is great. What have you made of the well wishes and support you've had from uh, the Latics and from supporters of the club? Uh, well, it's tremendous. I mean, I've been watching as of tomorrow. Uh, I will have been watching Oldham for 52 years. Um, I believe it was the 6th of February 1964, a defeat, of course, against Southend. Um, uh, but I've had a uh, great response from Athletic, uh, great response from friends of mine who are Oldham supporters. Um, I used to be part of a, a, a sort of loose organisation called Oldham Athletic Supporters in the South. We're going back to the ground for the final game of the season against Coventry uh, and we'll have a night in Oldham before that. Uh, and the club, of course, have invited me to uh, uh, attend the game against Chesterfield, the reciprocal fixture against Chesterfield. Um, and I hope to be able to say thank you to uh, people in person. Just finally, perhaps you could tell us just about some of the highlights of watching the Latics and favourite players you've had over the years? Uh, well, highlights are obviously the Joe Royal years. Uh, the uh, three years in the Premiership, the two Cup semi-finals um, against Manchester United, both of them replayed, uh, the uh, League Cup final at Wembley um, against uh, one of your local, uh, one of uh, Chesterfield's local rivals, Nottingham Forest, uh, and then odd games that you you just remember because of, for, for other reasons. As for players, well. Uh, it would be wrong of me not to mention Roger Wilde, who was uh, who I gather played for Chesterfield. Um, John Sheridan, obviously, Andy Ritchie, uh, Roger Palmer, uh, Ian Marshall, um, a man called Alan Groves, who sadly uh, died in the 1970s. Uh, lots and lots of players. I could probably, if I sat here all afternoon, I could probably list them. Uh, but uh, you know, I've been an Oldham fan all my life and uh, I always will be. Um, it's a pity that I, I collapsed at an Oldham game but I suppose if, it was, uh, if I was uh, potentially going to die anywhere I would have chosen to die watching Oldham. I know I said the last question, but I think another and finally uh, yeah. is required just to say um, your message to anybody who's thinking about uh, the fact that they need to learn life-saving skills, um, what would you say to them? Well, it's two words, do it. Just do it. Uh, it might be a family member, it might be a friend, of course it might be nobody that you have the chance to help. But just imagine how you'd feel if you'd been given the opportunity to uh, uh, get CPR training uh, and a loved one collapsed and you were unable to do anything about it. So I would say just do it.